everyone welcome to my youtube channel uh, welcome back if you've been here before but if you are new here come on in let's talk about things that matter most on this channel we aim to encourage to motivate and to inspire you with the word of god so that your faith is strengthened and when your faith is strong you are able to live your best life a life that god intended for you to live today we are talking about god as our loving father and how we can receive his love i'm just going to start by sharing a little bit of my personal life just so uh, i can encourage and help someone i grew up without a father so i don't really know how it's like being raised by an earthly father fortunately for me i gave my life to god as in became born again when i was 12 years old whoop, whoop. So I looked to God as a father. He has been my father all my life. And man, I can attest to this. He has done a good job of it. If I, if I may say so myself. I'm still standing. I'm still here. And all the glory goes to him. Thank you, Jesus. I have learned quite a few things about him being a heavenly father to us. Which is what I'm going to, to share with you today. The word of God in Psalm 68 verse 5 says, A father of the fatherless, a defender of widows, is God in his holy habitation. God is our father. He is our daddy. Galatians chapter 4 verses 4 to 7 say, But when the fullness of the time had come, God sent forth his son, born of a woman, born under the law, to redeem those who were under the law, that we might receive the adoption, the adoption as sons. And because you are sons, the word of God says, God has sent forth the spirit of his son into your heart, crying out, Abba, Father, therefore you are no longer a slave, but a son. And if a son, then an heir of God through Christ. Ooh, that's powerful. The message version of the Bible says, you can tell for sure that you are now fully adop adopted as his own children. Not just sons, but children. Everybody included. Because God sent the spirit of his son into our lives, crying out, Papa, Father. Doesn't that privilege of intimate conversation with God make it plain that you are not a slave, but a child? Abba is a colloquial form of address used by little Jewish children toward uh, their fathers. And best translated, Papa or Daddy or Baba, it opens up the possibility of undreamed of, unheard of intimacy with God. In any other great world religion, it is so unthinkable to address God the Almighty as Abba, as Daddy. So today, know him, God, as not just father, but papa, daddy, papa. In 2 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 18, the Bible says, I will be a father to you, and you shall be my sons and daughters, says the Lord Almighty. This is a promise, and we know that God is faithful to his promises. They are yes and amen. John chapter 3, verses 1 to 3 say, See what great love the Father has lavished on us, that we should be called children of God. And that is what we are. That is who we are. The reason the world does not know us is that it did not know him. And then 1 John chapter 3, verse 1. Uh, John 1 12 says, but as many as received him, to them he gave the right to become children of God. To those who believe in his name. Hallelujah. Now, child of God, you have the right to call God Father, Papa, to call him Daddy, to have an intimate personal relationship with him. It's your blood-bought right to be called a child of God, the Bible says. It's your blood-bought right to call him Abba Father. It's your blood-bought right to expect him to take care of you. It's your blood-bought right to, to really be, be provided for by God, to, to walk in divine health. It's your blood-bought right to expect goodness and mercy to follow you all the days of your life. It's your blood-bought right. It's your right the bible say so how do we receive this life number one give yourself wholeheartedly to him if you're not born again you need to be born again to be able to receive his love fully he still loves you just the way you are but he loves you too much to leave you that way 
He wants the best for you. He wants you to live your best life, the life that he intended for you to live. Give him your all, your pain, your rejection, your past, everything really. He's able to turn your mess into a testimony. He's able to give you beauty for ashes. Number two, desire to know him more. Be hungry for God. Seek his face. Matthew chapter 5 verse 6 says, Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they shall be filled. You know, this is a saying that I really love, and I have found it to be true. It says, when the student is ready, the teacher appears. When you are hungry for God, when you are hungry for knowledge, God will make a way for you to find it. He will bring mentors your way. A friend will mention something that will lead you to finding an answer to a problem you, were, you, know, you had encountered. The word of God will somehow jump out of the Bible and a scripture you have known for years will have a totally different meaning to you. When you are hungry for God, he will satisfy your soul, the Bible says. There are so many facets of God and when you seek him wholeheartedly, he will reveal himself to you. You will get to know that he is your father, your daddy. And because he's your daddy, you lack for no good thing. You have all that you need for life and godliness. He is a responsible father who will provide for every one of your needs. Number three, worship him. Desire his presence. When you worship God, your knowledge of him as your father increases. You begin to get a new perspective. That's what worship does for you. You begin to see things differently. Things that were so big for you. Things that seemed really big. They're not so big after all because now you know who your daddy is. Nothing can match his power. And his power and love put together, that is unparalleled. His love compels him to do you good. God loves you so much that he wants it well with you. He wants to heal you. He wants to provide for you. That's what a good daddy does. He wants to protect you. We need to really remember that his love for us is unconditional. It is pure and not fickle. His love is not based on your performance. It is not based on how good you are. There is absolutely nothing that you can do to make him not love you. Your sin, your flaws will not run him off. He loves you. Thank you so much for watching. And if you are not born again, and after listening to this, you really want to make that decision. But you don't know how you don't you don't know how here's a little prayer for you to say just say after me thank you lord for loving me today i believe you love me i give my life to you come into my heart i confess that you are lord my lord and my savior I am now born again in Jesus' name. Amen. Once again, thank you everybody for watching. Remember to click the subscribe button if you haven't done so yet so that you can be notified of any new uh, video uploads. Stay blessed and see you in the next video. God loves you and he's your daddy. Bye for now. Bye.